OpenAI releases a new guide giving six strategies for getting better results from ChatGPT. Over the last couple of weeks, there has been some scuttlebutt about ChatGPT getting noticeably worse. Jason DeMeo tweets, is it just me or does ChatGPT seem like it's getting dumber? Maybe I'm just getting dumber. I mean, the dream writes ChatGPT 4 is dumber than it was a week ago. Why? DT Deeper Thrill writes, ChatGPT 4 from March was significantly smarter than whatever is being deployed now. They neutered my boy with all their fancy reinforcement learning to make it aligned and their quantized models to run faster. Starting to become unusable. They thought no one would notice. Well, us smart people noticed when something close to our level starts to sound like a normie. Don't demean us and pretend you haven't changed anything under the hood. I can tell it's way dumber now. Shannon Sands responds to him and says, It's objectively worse on code generation. As in, things it could do previously are suddenly difficult. It's ignoring supplied context and even pointing out it's hallucinating doesn't help much. It'll literally output the same code unfixed or with new bugs. Francisco in San Francisco says, I've been using it to help me create an iOS app since March and I've gone through three iterations of it since. No doubt this last version of my app has taken me way more prompts to get the results I got months ago. Now, Robert Scoble retweeted that post and said, has OpenAI gotten stupider for you? Arena Cronin says, yes, something's been done. Feels like an experiment, which means something else is coming soon. Nick Dobos writes, yup, noticed a significant change in the way my prompts behaved. Unsure if model change or perhaps a new system prompt or RLHF safety pass. Ali Jules writes, yes, I've especially noticed this within the last week. I'm prompting the same and I'm having to correct 90% plus of the output. I feel like I'm arguing with it and getting frustrated with the I apologize responses. I even ran a few English and language arts high school level test questions through ChatGPT, and it gave wrong answers to four of the five questions. Frustrating and concerning. Now, ChatGPT definitely noticed all this chatter. Logan on their developer relations team says, There have been a lot of threads and comments around the models in ChatGPT and the API outputs getting much worse in the last few weeks. This is a huge reason why we open sourced OpenAI evals. You can write an eval and test the quality over time. No guesswork. I said it before, but I will say it again. The models in the API do not change unless we announce they have changed. For ChatGPT, things are always in motion, but the most effective thing you can do to help us prevent and identify regressions is make an eval. However, OpenAI went a little bit farther. Ben's Bytes wrote yesterday, Man, OpenAI is damn sharp. I don't know if you've noticed, but Twitter has been pretty jam-packed lately with folks claiming that the quality of ChatGPT outputs has been strangely slipping over the past few weeks. And only a few days later, out comes a guide on prompting from OpenAI. Yeah, it's not us, it's you, is the message I'm getting here. So today, let's go over their six best practices with some applied examples. OpenAI writes, GPT best practices. This guy shared strategies and tactics for getting better results from GPTs. So on a high level, the six strategies are one, write clear instructions, two, provide reference text, three, split complex tasks into simpler subtasks, four, give GPTs time to think, five, use external tools, and six, test changes systematically. So let's zoom into the write clear instructions bucket first, as this will be where a lot of people find most of their value add. The first tactic they give is pretty obvious. Include details in your query to get more relevant answers. So they say a worse query is who's president versus a better query is who was the president of Mexico in 2021 and how frequently are elections held. Perhaps a more relevant example for those of you out here who are smart enough to be watching this video is they say summarize the meeting notes is worse than summarize the meeting notes in a single paragraph, then write a markdown list of the speakers in each of their key points. Finally, list the next steps or action items suggested by the speakers, if any. This is pretty obvious, so I don't want to spend too much time here. I just want to give you one example of something that I've found is often really helpful. And that is to specify at what level of education you want a response to come in at. So for example, let's take a recent AI research paper. It's called Recognize Anything, a Strong Image Tagging Model. And we're going to use the archive link with ChatGPT's XPaper plugin to get a summary of this paper. We're writing, can you please summarize this paper in a paragraph of less than 75 words? Okay, so now we've got this first summary. The paper Recognize Anything, a Strong Image Tagging Model introduces the Recognize Anything Model, RAM, a robust model for image tagging. RAM uses large-scale image text parish for training, eliminating the need for manual annotations. The model's development involves four key steps, including automatic text semantic parsing, preliminary model training, data engine utilization for annotation, and model retraining. RAM shows impressive zero-shot performance, surpassing clip, blip, and even fully supervised methods. And what we're going to do now is to ask to make it basically simpler, but we're going to put the request contextually. Can you please make this understandable for a early high school level audience explaining 
the applied relevance to the real world as well in a similar length of 75 to 100 words. What it comes back with then is, the paper talks about a new computer program called RAM that's really good at understanding and labeling what's in a picture, like a cat or a car. Instead of needing people to tell it what's in lots of pictures first, which is how most of these programs learn, it uses a clever method to learn from pictures and words found together on the internet. This is useful because it can help computers understand our world better, which could make things like search engines or photo apps more accurate and helpful. I have found over and over again that actually changing the educational level of the intended response is really, really useful for dialing in understanding, especially as you're trying to learn a new concept. Now, what about another tactic that OpenAI suggests asking the model to adopt a persona? Let's try this using the same example. Can you please imagine a conversation between podcast host Joe Rogan and a guest who is one of the researchers to explain the concept in a back and forth question and answer of no more than 250 combined words? Now, obviously, someone like Lex Friedman might have been a better example, but I wanted to give ChatGPT a podcast host who was well known enough to have a body of information that it could pull from. So for a result, we have this dialogue. Joe Rogan says, so you've created a computer program that can identify anything in a picture, right? Researcher, yes, that's correct, Joe. We call it RAM. It's a new kind of image tagging model. Joe Rogan says image tagging like when Facebook recognizes your friend's faces. Researcher, exactly, but RAM goes beyond faces. It can recognize any common object in a picture. Joe Rogan, how does it learn to do that? Researcher, well, instead of us manually teaching it with labeled pictures, it learns from pictures and words found together on the internet. Joe Rogan, so it's like it's teaching itself? Researcher, you could say that. It's a more efficient way of training these models. Joe Rogan, and how can this be used in the real world? Researcher, it can make things like search engines or photo apps more accurate. Imagine typing a word and getting exact image results or your photo app automatically organizing your pictures by what's in them. It's a big step forward in computer vision. What you're seeing here is that because we're working off of a reference text, it's not the information underlying it that's changing. It's the way that it's delivering the information in ways that we might be able to understand. And effectively what's going on here is we are helping ChatGPT understand how to teach us what's in this paper, what's in this reference text. By the way, adopting a persona can be really interesting for creative examples as well. Last month, I asked ChatGPT to imagine that it was Albert Einstein. I said, you've been transported with a time machine to the modern era. Please write a letter to a dear friend from back in your own time about the rise of generative artificial intelligence. I'd like you to explore what Einstein would have been excited about, as well as what some of his concerns might be. Please try to mirror Einstein's manner of speaking and writing. I'll create a shared link to this one so you can read it in full from the show notes, but the result it came back with was pretty fun. My dearest friend, I write to you from a future time unlike any we could have possibly imagined, a world that will fill your heart with awe, but perhaps also a thread of trepidation. Technology has taken leaps and bounds, flying over the hurdles of the unfathomable, landing squarely in the domain of the miraculous. Among the most astounding developments is the rise of what is known as generative artificial intelligence. One might liken this phenomenon to an infant who learns to parrot the words of his mother and father, and then begins to string these together to create sentences of his own. Except in this case, the infant is a machine, and its parents are the vast tracts of data it is fed. And the sentences it forms are so cleverly strung together, so packed with nuance and apparent understanding, that you would swear you were conversing with a fellow human. And therein lies both the promise and the potential peril. All right, but back to OpenAI's GPT best practices. Their second strategy for getting better results is providing a reference text. Well, I think we've already been over that a little bit, given that I used a research paper and the X Papers plugin to do that. Now, one thing I will note is that this is one area where plugins do really shine. You can often find now the right plugin to pull in information without just having to copy paste it in the context window. A third strategy OpenAI gives is to split complex tasks into simpler subtasks. They write, for tasks in which lots of independent sets of instructions are needed to handle different cases, it can be beneficial to first classify the type of query and to use that classification to determine which instructions are needed. This can be achieved by defining fixed categories and hard coding instructions that are relevant for handling tasks in a given category. The example that they give is customer service queries. They suggest classifying each into a primary category and a secondary category. Primary categories are things like billing, technical support, and account management, with the secondary categories, for example, under billing being unsubscribe or upgrade, add a payment method, explanation for charge, dispute a charge. The idea here is that once ChatGPT is able to understand what category the input relates to, a more specific set of instructions can be provided to handle the next steps. For example, let's say that the query comes in in the form of technical support with the secondary category of troubleshooting. From there, the additional context could be things like ask them to check that all cables to and from the routers are connected. If all cables are connected and the issue persists, ask them which router model they are using. Now you will advise them on how to restart their device and so on and so forth. 
Now, one other thing to note in this split complex tasks into simpler subtasks is a lot of the issues here have to do with the context length for ChatGPT. As we discussed before, ChatGPT is currently limited to 8,000 tokens, which is around four to 5,000 words. As larger context lengths come online, some of these tactics, like summarizing long documents piecewise and constructing a full summary recursively, may no longer be necessary. The next strategy OpenAI suggests they call give GPTs time to think, although I kind of think they've mislabeled this. What they're pointing out is that ChatGPT isn't really thinking, it's guessing in a sophisticated way. And so when we want a particular type of output, we need to instruct it on almost how to guess or how to think. They write, sometimes we get better results when we explicitly instruct the model to reason from first principles before coming to a conclusion. So as a for example, I asked, do the benefits of AI outweigh the risks? Now, its first response is it started writing a very basic list of benefits versus risks. It was really just a summary of what others had said on the topic. It in no way reflected an actual thought process. Now, this is useful if all I wanted out of this was a list of the benefits versus a list of the risks so that I could decide for myself. But if I wanted something from GPT that approximated a thought process, I needed to prompt it a little bit differently. So then I said, can you please now reason from first principles on whether the benefits of AI outweigh the risks? ChatGPT responds, sure. Reasoning from first principles allows us to break down complex problems into fundamental truths and then reason up from there. Let's apply that to the question of whether the benefits of AI outweigh the risks. The first principles it writes are that AI is just a tool, AI is powerful, AI is not conscious, AI capabilities are growing. Reasoning up from those principles, it says, considering these basic truths, we can start to form a perspective on whether the benefits of AI outweigh the risks. One, dependence on human usage. Two, risk mitigation. Three, lack of consciousness. Four, future potential. Now, the conclusion is still not the same as if you asked the human to actually firmly take a stance one way or another, but at least now we have not just a list of benefits and a list of risks, but a thought process that we can cross-reference. Now, in this case, the example that they give is even more clear. The tactic they suggest is instructing the model to work out its own solution before rushing to a conclusion. It gives the example of a student who's trying to figure out the total cost of the first year of operations for a new solar power installation. The first prompt they ask is just to determine if the student's solution is correct or not, while the second prompt says, first work out your own solution to the problem, then compare your solution to the student's solution, and evaluate if the student's solution is correct or not. Don't decide if the student's solution is correct until you have done the problem yourself. That second prompt allowed ChatGPT to figure out that one, the student's solution was incorrect, and two, where they made their specific error. The fifth strategy they suggest is using external tools. This is another area where plugins shine. Plugins allow us to point specific information that might be relevant to a particular query or question directly into ChatGPT, which makes it less likely to hallucinate and more likely to get the information that we actually require. They also point to the example of using code execution to perform more accurate calculations or call external APIs. The sixth strategy they suggest is test changes systematically. And this kind of gets back to Logan's points about how they're now open sourcing evaluation models so that people can get more involved in helping them improve ChatGPT over time. However, for the vast majority of day-in, day-out use cases, I don't think this one is relevant as, for example, write clear instructions. So when all is said and done, how useful are these tips? I'm honestly not totally sure. I think content creators have done a great job of writing different tips and prompts and tricks, and even the ones that are doing it for engagement still can have some really valuable insights. I wouldn't be surprised if it would have been an even more valuable use of OpenAI's time to actually aggregate and create a repository of those free resources for people. But hey, maybe that is an opportunity for someone out there who is trying to help people figure out this new AI-powered world. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown. Those are OpenAI's six strategies for getting better results from GPT. Let me know what you think. Let me know if any of these are actually useful for you. And of course, if you're liking this content, please like, subscribe, and share it. Click the notification button so you don't miss an episode. Go listen to the podcast or subscribe to the newsletter. And until next time, peace.